Chris, I'm afraid what you're going to find out in your podcast here is that what you think is finesse is just sloth. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of that's you know that's why I love Johnny Thunders. You know what I mean? That's that's what that's what we love. It's the slop that makes yeah. the magic and is hard to reproduce. Well, maybe that's it. Yeah. It's hard to. Yeah, there was no AI for this. No. No, no. Like you, you have to be a kind of inept bastard to do this. <laughs> I mean, so you're right, though. I mean, it is like that. I'm doing that with like slight variations, maybe, you know. I don't know. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is just those two chords. Easier than I thought. I thought there was going to be all kinds of like, you know. I don't know, these these chords and things like that. I thought I was hearing all that. I think I'm just, you know, projecting that onto your song. That's like a little Westerberg version you were doing. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that gets us to the big uh, chorus chords. And this goes back to what I was talking about before, where you've got the bass is moving around like in the E major scale. And the guitar, if I'm not mistaken, is just kind of droning up here, like almost like on a, like, is it like a power chord? Is that what you're playing that on the E? It's really, it's just the big muff with an octave at the E. So it's just going like, that is kind of a downstroke part. It's just like. Yeah. Okay, so it's an octave. And then toggling up to that that F sharp. And then big, big chords. Gotcha. Okay, any changes in verse two or chorus two? Or, or uh, verse, what is it, verse three by then, chorus two? Pretty, I mean, same plan. It's probably some slight variations. <laughs> forgotten in time we're gonna have to save that for when the uh for when this song gets stemmed out um all right well that brings us to really the meat of what we're here to talk about which is that big crazy orchestrated um midsection that uh again even though it's not like a traditional guitar solo to my mind and to my ear functions in a similar way where it's 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 a new uh, it's a scene change in the song. It's a different mood. And then it builds and just gradually gets more and more intense and then explodes into the, the final chorus. So take me through this. This sounds like there's a lot of layers kind of uh, leapfrogging, but why don't we start with the main one? What do you do? Is it all octaves? Let me show you my notes. I think this is the best way because I had to, when I, we were getting ready for Riot Fest, when we got back together, we had to real. I had to like map this out so I wouldn't freak. Oh, nice! But you can see my my tab work. Oh, nice! Which is just the the uh, you know the frets, right? Ah, okay, that's what that is. That's not like uh, you know uh, 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 extra notes in the chords. That's like the actual fret you were playing on. Yeah, it's just octaves. It says octave stalls, starting on fourteen. And I, I use a, uh, I use a freeze pedal to kind of let those things. You ever use a freeze? No. Yeah, what is a freeze pedal? Oh, it's so great. It's it just like, it's kind of like a looper. It just holds your note as, and you can continue to play, but it'll create this like overtone of whatever note you were just on. Oh. Wow. So, so it actually kind of freezes when you step on it. Yeah. And it's got a latch key and like you can do them really, they, they end up sounding kind of like a synth or like an organ or just really ghostly. It's kind of my go-to pedal now. 